morning dish. He's the hardest working man in show business. His band's music takes you into the midnight hours. And when you wake up, his voice is back on your radio alarm clock. How on earth did this happen? Well, Jeff saw me taking out the trash at the radio station. And he won another award. But this one is better. I'm your food it's the Morning Dish with the 2019 Radio Personality of the Year winner, Stephen Phillips. You paying attention to this, Packy? And Murphy's own Sherry Rains. Yeah, you must have given horseback passes to the right guy, Stephen. Well, giddy up. And Packy Smith's Shetland Pony is right alongside. You guys know these demo tapes don't just edit themselves together, right? Well, all right. Three cheers for Stephen Phillips. Y'all need to help Stephen Phillips out over there. Out the door and off the radio. Here's Stephen Phillips. All right, folks, we're back with you, and I'm excited to know when to have a guy that I've actually become friends with, Mafe Nutter, all the way from California. How are you, brother? I'm blessed and highly favored and wishing the same on you, Stephen. Uh, First of all, I love your music, man. You have got, I mean, you're like a singer-songwriter from the day of, the greats. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate that. You've got that one song, Skinny Dip, and we're going to have to change it to Chunky Duncan now because we're getting... <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I have a big story behind that song, too, whenever you're ready. <laughs> I'm ready. I want to hear it. I definitely want to hear that. All righty. Um, first of all, I was the leader of a folk singing group called the New Christy Minstrels. Right. It's probably before your time, but remember, this land is your land. This land is my land. Oh, yeah. So anyway, and uh, well, some of the uh, fellow graduates there were uh, people like Kenny Rogers, mm-hmm. who uh, went on to the first edition after uh, I had left the, uh, retired from the group, and I was doing uh, my own show at the famous uh, Troubadour right. in Hollywood, mm-hmm. and it was just all my own uh, original songs. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I, f- I finished the uh, the show, th- there are about six steps that you come down from the stage, and then you have to pass through the audience to get to the dressing room. You know, one of those, <laughs> if you've never been to the Troubadour, it's a great uh, uh, kind of cozy place, but <laughs> lots of fun. Anyway, I didn't get all the way down those steps, and people were still clapping, and uh, here comes this guy up the steps, meets me halfway there. He's got a leather jacket on all the way down to his ankles. Mm-hmm. And he's got one of those World War II uh, pilot helmets on with a little fuzzy wool thing on the forehead. Oh, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. And he said, uh, um, what kind of music was that, man? And I said, "Uh, well, they're just songs that I write. He said, yeah, but they're all over the place. I mean, there's it's country, but it's it's rock, and and it's it's, the rhythm is... well, why don't you come and make some records with me? I got my own record company, and I recognized him. It was Frank Zappa. Oh Lord, you got to be kidding! <laughs> was, I'm not kidding. How cool is that? Frank Zappa, and I said, uh, oh, "Well, Frank, I, I just don't think I belong on Barking Pumpkin Records. <laughs> you know, bizarre productions that just doesn't sound like you know Mae Nutter on the Barking Pumpkin Records. Not sure." He said, "Yeah, but he said no, no." No, you can have all 100% artist control. Uh, nobody can tell you how to do anything, uh, any arrangements, or what to, songs to put, nothing. You have 100% artist control, and, and that means even me. You know, nobody can tell you what to that, that, Some of those songs, you're just, that one, and that, can you believe that Frank Zappa remembered actually a couple of verses of one of the songs right. that had never been recorded, and, uh, you know, only the people at that show were probably the first to hear it. Anyway, the song said, uh, uh, One quart of tequila, one half a gallon wine. I really don't remember, but they say I had a real good time <laughs> yesterday. And he he actually sang that back to me. Wow. And then he, they said, well, I really like that verse. that said, all the hangers on and losers were best of friends of mine. Each evening was a party, and the weekend was a long white line. No, nobody's saying that. Yeah. He said, you know, they might tell you, you know, let's let's get drunk and have a party, but nobody says yesterday when I, I was a fool. That was it. He said, why don't you come and I'll, and I'll, I'll start a brand new record label just for you. 
Now, remember, we're standing three steps up from the floor in this place having this conversation <laughs> at the Troubadour in Hollywood. Wow. And, uh, and he said, yeah, wait just a minute, wait just a minute, stand right there. And he turned around and went to a table, and he wrote something down and came back up and held it up for me. And he said, uh, now what do you think of this? Read it back to me. What do, what's it say? And I said, it says, uh, Straight Records, Mace Nutter. <laughs> he said, I'll start a brand new record company just for you. And I said, well, I don't. he said, can you come to the office on Monday? This is Saturday night. And I did show up at the office on Monday morning. And uh, he had two contracts already signed and, and on the desk. One as an artist for Straight Records and another one for a songwriter for uh, Third Story Music. Wow. And that was, that was the beginning of that one. And, that, and uh, this was a story about uh, going skinny dipping. And he said, <laughs> he said uh, Maeve, I, I love all your songwriting and stuff, but most songwriters start off with uh, Back Home in Louisiana or... Right. Uh, you know, um, my granddad was a great old guy. Something about the family or oh, yeah. growing up. He said, and, and and you're you're writing stuff that's just really. And then he he quoted two or three other songs that I'd sung that night. Right. And he said, oh, just for me, would you would you mind just writing you know something, anything about back in West Virginia where you grew up? And I said, okay, <laughs> um, to do that. And uh, with the uh, two contracts were actually uh, there was a check on each of those contracts. I went down from uh, his office down to the ground floor there at the bank and, and actually cashed the checks. And went, so they were good. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's funny. A musician, anyway, that's the first thing you do is check and make sure the cash is there. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Frank was great. I, I just love him. And I'm, you know, I'm sorry he's gone. But, oh, yeah. Um, I decided, he said, write something about, you know, people back home or something. So I decided I'd write a song using the names of uh, a lot of people from uh, back in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. And I, I grew up on a, a little creek called Two Lick Run. And it was called Two Lick Run because uh, there were two salt licks up at the where the, the uh, stream began. Right. And that's where the deer and the other animals went to get their salt. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, so I just started writing, and I actually didn't even write it. I just started spouting out a, a kind of a, a, a poem rap type of thing, and, and I said, uh, Robert Lee and Scotty boys, come along quick. Delma Lee and Lula Bell are swimming in the creek. Stop that snicker, and we're going to get a licking if Uncle Bernie catches us a going skinny dipping. <laughs> That's, a cool... <laughs> That's a cool little thing, man. There ain't no doubt. Yeah, and well, let, let me tell you about this going skinny dipping thing. Here. Okay. I got a phone call from a friend of mine who said he knew a guy named Guy Waldron who was trying to get a new uh, TV series on the air, and uh, he'd gone to CBS, ABC, NBC, each of those three times each year for the last three years. That means he had gone to them, each one of them, nine times changing right. stuff. They said, well, it's close, but that's not really what we wanted to do. And, uh, and so he decided he was going to do one more try. And he called my uh, mutual friend, because I didn't know the guy's guy, guy Waldron. I didn't know him. He called my friend Alan, and he said, uh, I have Maeve Nutter's album over here. You, you know Maeve Nutter, don't you? He said, yeah, yeah, I know. He said, would you ask him if I can use his Skinny Dippin' album, the cover, and his song going Skinny Dippin'? I, I, I want to use it, pitch this uh, TV series one more time. Right. And if it doesn't work, just to heck, I, it must just be a bad idea. So Alan called me and asked me, could his friend use it to plug the show? And I said, sure. I had no idea what it was. So he went in there and he held up the album cover, which had a picture of me that was taken behind Merle Haggard's house in the Kern River with the water up to my navel. That was the Skinny Dippin' uh, cover album there. And so he played the, the, the song for him. And Guy Waldron tells the story like this. He said, everybody sat there silently. They kind of giggled a little at each other. And then when the song was over, nobody said anything. <laughs> they looked at each other, and somebody pulled out a, a contract, put it on the desk, 
and the Dukes of Hazard was born. Really? The Dukes of Hazard got started because of my song Going Skinny Dip. I did not know that. that, and especially the album cover. I had no idea that was in the Kern River out behind Merle Haggard's house. Yeah, well, if there's something else on that cover, you look at it close, take a look at the trees behind me. Okay. It was the second week of December. (laughs) 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 Oh, I don't even want to go there. That is so neat. Uh, Yeah, that uh, is neat, but that is so unreal. Yeah, yeah, that... uh, You know, I, I, I'm glad the picture was uh, from. Uh, I'm glad it was, <laughs> the yeah. waist down, waist up. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad. It, I'm glad the water was up as high as it was because it looked like I had two belongings. <laughs> I mean, it was cold. <laughs> that is so funny. Golly, <laughs> the stories you have got. I just love listening to them. I guarantee it. But I had no yeah. idea that's the start of uh, Dukes of Hazard. Man, what a run that had. Golly. Yeah, well, I didn't get a chance to, uh, to audition for either of the, the uh, lead roles of the boys there because they casted them back in the state of Georgia. Yeah, back here where we're yeah, at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's where they where they got Bo and Luke Duke uh, cast back there. So I didn't even get a chance to audition for that, but. They called me to do a guest star role that first season, mm-hmm. and it was clear up into the it was the ninth, ninth episode that they did, and uh, I stole the president's limousine when they, they stopped at the Duke's of, at the uh, what they called the the uh, Boar's Nest. Yeah, there. yeah, where Daisy Duke worked. Okay, that, now uh, now I'm at Harris in Reno. I, I was booked there in the. Uh, in the lounge, Hank Jr. was was uh, going to start playing there uh, in, in a couple of nights or something like that. So I was up in his room and we were talking and, and everything. And uh, he said, "He said, oh man, I'm glad you stopped in here." He said, "You know, I, I wanted you to play me in this uh, movie that's coming up. Right? You know that they're going to do it." And I said, uh, "Yeah, and I heard about that, but you know, I didn't even get a chance to audition or anything." He said, "No, but you ought to do it." Because you hunt, you fish, you're you, you're a real outdoorsy kind of a guy, and uh, you know me, and right. and you can sing, and you can play. He said, "Oh man," I, I, uh, he said, uh, uh, "I I just don't know how, how that." Uh, uh, <laughs> trying to think of a good word here. Uh, <laughs> very <clears throat> feminine kind of a kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay, we got it. Yeah. yeah. Name name Richard Richard Thomas is going to uh, is going to play me. Richard Thomas, that little uh, and uh, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> he said he said I don't know how he could play me. You ought to play. Me. And then I mean he was mad. He, he anyway. Um, long story short, the uh, he said the phone rang, and uh, it was CBS. Excuse me, babe, i got to take this call. So Hank Jr. picks up the phone, and he says, oh, and he talks to the guy. And he says, yeah, okay, yeah, they told me that was uh, what they were going to do. And, yeah, that sounds okay. I could, Yeah, I even have uh, maybe I could get a horse where you could do this. Mm-hmm. I just don't think that little, uh, <sighs> that little fairy Richard Thomas can play me. Right. Can play Hank Williams Jr. Right. I just don't think <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, the guy said, well, that's why I'm calling you. This is Richard Thomas. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was, so Hank Jr. was telling uh, how Richard Thomas could never play him in this movie. And uh, Sit, he, Sitting there talking he, to him. He was talking to Richard Thomas on the phone. And then, and, now, and then Richard told me about it later, you know, how he told me about all that, too. I think uh, Williams probably, he didn't even care, I guess, at the time, did he? I mean, knowing him. Oh, no, but he didn't know it. Yep. He'd, he'd been talking to the guy this whole conversation about it. And that's how he discovered it was, uh, he was talking to Richard. That was the end of the conversation. Yeah, I, I bet. <laughs> yeah, I bet. He didn't, the, you know, uh, Richard didn't say, uh, hello, uh, Hank, uh, this is Richard Thomas, and I'm going to pay you. No, no, if it had started that way, it would have been a different conversation. Yeah. 
<laughs> Mafe, we have got to get to a break, man. We have uh, about run out of time here. I so much enjoy talking to you, and I want to call you back and get you back on and talk some more if that's okay. Sure. Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. And keep up with you or some kind of character. I'm, everybody loves you. There's no doubt about it. Everybody that knows you, they are always got a story to tell. And uh, I know oh, why that's now. that's good. Yep. That's good. Very much. All right. God bless you and stay happy. Hey, I'll be calling you. We'll talk to you. Thank you for spending a little time with us. And remember, you can tune in every morning at WJULradio.com at 8 a.m. Eastern. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook, The Morning Dish.